so much. I officially just started recording. So let's get this party started, Kathy. Let's, let's do this. this. Um, thank so, you, thanks, thanks, thanks Chelsea, Chelsea for, for having me. me. Oh, well, again, thank you so much for your patience, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Happy belated Thanksgiving, first and foremost, of course. Um, I'm still digesting my turkey. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, All the so food, yeah. Right. So, Kathy, we officially sent out question Q1. I, I, I could hear you before I wasn't able to log in. So I heard you start to um, uh, start to explain some of your answers. So let's start with Q1 and, and get this party going. Perfect. Um, so I was saying a little bit about what it is. So, um, you know, lot, I mean, the people that are here in Blab and everything obviously know the phenomenon that is live streaming and how it's kind of just really taken over the conversation in some ways. Um, but, you know, Periscope per se is a live streaming app that allows you to broadcast uh, video, live video from your mobile devices to, you know, the rest of the world through, you know, through social media, which is kind of like that amazing factor. Um, you know, I, I personally think it's taken the social media world by storm in some way because it's, it's so authentic. It's so raw. It's unedited. It's, you know, it's real and it's, and it's, and, and you know, and then for example, with Blab, it's very collaborative as well. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's got so many facets, definitely. Um, and I always go back to this, you know, it's Periscope, especially, I think, um, in some ways is like having a TV station in the palm of your hands. Mm. It's extremely powerful. You know, it's extremely, extremely powerful. Um, I think we've seen that, you know, uh, when the Paris attacks happened, you know, I think it was very clear, um, the amount of folks that were on the ground reporting and sharing information on Periscope that was real and authentic and just, you know, it was amazing to watch, you know, despite the, you know, it was such a, so, such unfortunate situation and so sad. Um, but it was interesting to watch the power that live streaming had. I mean, I, you had Euro Maestro showing you the real emotion, you know, not an edited package. He was showing you really how people were feeling on the streets. So um, that's what I mean by it's extremely powerful. It's like having a TV station in the palm of your hand. I know it, Kathy, and and you know, Kathy and I have a totally, you know, we have ten. So we actually have twelve questions to flush through this evening. And sometimes I just organically throw questions at my guests. And you know what? I just feel like it would be an injustice if we didn't mention the, you know, terrible shooting that happened on live television, which mm -hmm. I think many of us couldn't help but think, oh no, is this going to be somewhat of a new trend in using? live streaming for the bad instead of the good um and you know i just feel like we, it would be an injustice if we didn't touch on it and make sure that we were you know promoting live streaming for for good reasons instead of bad reasons so um you know how do you feel about that being such a presence in the periscope world and how can we make sure that things like that don't start to become you, you know the next trend in in things that don't need to happen in the world I think that's a great question. I mean, I take Periscope and live streaming with the good and the bad. I mean, I understand that there's going to be people that are going to use it for, let's say, negative purposes or for evil or however you want to. Some people call it scoping for evil. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they actually did, you know, but I think scoping for good's better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's important to talk about it because um, I also see it, you know, in the in hindsight, it could be really useful for law enforcement you know, to track down folks, you know, that are trying to do something negative or to even help, let's say, you know, younger girls that might be using the app and they don't really know what they're doing. And there might be someone in, in there trying to direct what they're doing in a negative way. You know, if there's a community and that's, I think the big thing, if there's a community behind it that is going to report these things and that is going to kind of keep, um, keep it, things in check, it helps. I think it's been great. I mean, there's a, an example of my, my good friend, Liza, XO, at XOXO Liza, um, who actually, someone in her community reached out and said, there's these girls doing a scope. Uh, they're young. I think they were 12 or 13. There were men in there telling them what to do. I mean, these young girls were obviously being influenced. Um, and she was able to, like, I don't even know how she did it, but she was able to kind of figure out a lot of stuff and called the police department and they were able to kind of shut it down okay. and like get to the, to the, to the kids, you know, to the girl's house and, the parents shut it down. So, um, so it's, it's, there's good and there's bad. Um, you know, and I do think, I do think we are going to be seeing a lot more footage, raw periscope footage on the news. Someone, um, Scream Wax was saying it's been used at CNN. BBC used it, um, during some fires in California, it was used as well. Um, so I think we are going to be seeing that because it is, you know, in the palm of our hands. Right. So. Absolutely. And I just felt like, let's address it, get yeah. it, 
clear the air because, you know, when talking about um, different mediums, we have to just educate the, the people who are young and easily influenced on how to use it effectively and efficiently. And we are going to start to talk about how Periscope can enhance your brand. And, mm -hmm. you know, even though it's live streaming and not necessarily not, it doesn't have to necessarily be recorded. Once it's out there, it's out there. So okay. we wanted to make sure that we were sharing uh, that positive message. Um, so let's move on to Q2, Kathy. You have so much amazing content to cover in the next 45 minutes. So Q2 was already sent via Blab, sending it out via Twitter as well. For all the people joining us on Blab, we are also doing a simultaneous Twitter chat using the hashtag Millennial Talk. So totally tweet away at us as well. Um, and Q2 is um, how are millennials embracing Periscope and mobile live streaming in general? Uh, and, and that's a great question because there is very little, the, the metrics are not out there yet. You know, there are certain tools you can use, but from a Periscope perspective, the metrics are not out there from a demographic perspective as to, you know, what are the ages. I mean, we've got, you know, more than 10 million users, et cetera, et cetera. So it's hard to say, like when people ask me, like specifically, I'm like, well, I can't tell you, tell you the age range. I mean, I've seen people, you can be 13 years old. Uh, you're supposed to be older than 13. And I've seen people who are 75 using it. So um, there's a huge range. But I have seen, especially with women, I can tell you, I've seen a lot of, a, a kind of an uptick of women, of millennial women, millennial, on, you know, millennial female entrepreneurs starting to use it. You know, and it's not to say that men aren't. I mean, plenty of men are. But I've seen a lot of women start to kind of um, use it and promote themselves and, and, be, and be fearless in some way, which is exciting. You know, because it's video, it can be a little scary. Yeah. Um, you, you know, obviously. So um, it's been exciting to see that. And I, I think that there's something about the platform being that it is, yeah, it's out there, but there is that element of it's going to be gone um, that is enticing, you know, mm -hmm. to, to the millennial mindset, you know, of fear of missing out. And, you know, and I, I have to do it now and I have to be there live. And, um, you know, I don't know, like I have that in me, like, for example, when I'm out doing something interesting, it might not be like a brand thing or it might not be like a campaign, but it might be something so interesting that I'm like, I just want to share this. Right. Like I want to share the experience. So, um, so I think that that's kind of very, very relevant when it comes to the millennial, um, to millennials adopting Periscope. I think, you know, also millennials love to feel um, feel first to be able to share it with their network, um, which is why we love Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You know, we love updating people as to what's going on in our personal world in addition to our career space. And Periscope really allows you to be your own broadcast journalist. You know, YouTube is taking a, a YouTube to the next level now that we have that live streaming real-time component that you could literally be live on the ground reporting and generate an audience as easily as we are this evening. And I feel like Periscope was really, you know, we got Meerkat and Periscope kind of like literally were neck and neck in their release. And they literally took, you know, building your own brand and becoming your own journalist, your own authority to the next level because you were able to do, um, you know, that on the ground real-time literally flip open the app and there you are with with an audience and um I, I think it's going to be really interesting as we watch these apps evolve into what other capabilities they're going to add on next i agree and it's it's really interesting to watch it because um you know we're all content creators we're all you know we're all we're all producing video we're all producing all this content that's exciting and that's relevant and can be very engaging and i'm with you 100 percent. i think it's going to evolve Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Brian fans always says like, I think it's Google was like the 21st search engine. Can you remember any of the other ones? Maybe a few, right? <laughs> Maybe a few, but you don't remember all of them. So who's to say, I mean, I'm a huge Periscope fan, but who's to say that's not going to evolve, right. you know, and it's, our conversation could be a very different one in a year, depending on, you know, everything that's going to be updated and changed. And, you know, so yeah, I totally agree with you. Absolutely. It's exciting, exciting times. <laughs> <laughs> it is exciting. It totally is, especially for the people that are, um, you know, in the content creation space, because it just allows us to evolve in the ways that we can effectively create content and appeal to our audience um, and allow to engage in our audience in so many different levels. And that's one of the reasons why I love even Blab, because it's allowed me to now have a video component to the Twitter mm -hmm. chats and have a whole nother dialogue uh, like we are right now in our mm -hmm. Blab feed in addition to a Twitter feed. It's just mm -hmm. uh, amazing what technology has allowed us to really do. 
Um, and I love it. So we're moving on to Q3. Um, and I love this question because I'm all about building the personal brand. I think millennials today have, you know, all the tools and literally the palm of their hand, thanks to our iPhone, in allowing us to build a personal brand and um, making a stamp in the world today, um, in, in the career space or in the freelance space or within your own business. Having a personal brand is so beneficial in so many different ways. So, Kathy... Take us through how Periscope is beneficial in, in enhancing your personal brand and how we should use it effectively and efficiently. Well, I think it's a huge platform. I've seen personally, I can tell you my personal brand has gone through the roof because of live streaming. Um, it, you know, it's, it's been crazy. My life has totally changed with live streaming. Um, and I feel it's such a powerful tool because you can have a voice. And, um, and like Cheval was saying here in the chat and Blab is, if you are creating, you're, you're a successful sculptor, if you're creating good content and engaging content. And, and um, I feel that if you have a strong personal brand and you know what you're doing, you know what your message is, you know what your, you know, your, um, act, you know, your action items are, and you provide good content, people are going to listen to you and people are going to follow you and respect you for whatever it is that you talk about within the live streaming world. Um, so it's, it's, it's exciting and it, it's, it's extremely powerful. Um, it's very, you know, um, I see it as an equalizer in some way, you know, and we all have the same phone, you know, or the same iPad or what have you, you can do little things here and there to make it better, but we all have the same equipment. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, at, I'm not as a, dis, at, the, at a disadvantage from a bigger brand as a personal brand, because we're kind of producing, you know, the same type of video. So it's huge. You know, and I get this question a lot, Kathy, about the personal brand in particular, being that um, that's how I started my career. At, little did I know it would trickle into a career. Um, but, you know, people that you have to start, everyone has to start at square one, right? You don't mm -hmm. start with 100,000 followers. You don't start with 100,000 eyeballs on your blab or, or on your Periscope or on your mirror cap whatever medium you're using. So how do we not get, you know, um, hard on ourselves for not accruing an audience right away or, you know, not kind of kicking ourselves in the foot that, oh, that's not working. Because mm -hmm. I think people think that, you know, the YouTube sensations literally happen overnight. And so many of those sensations were building content and creating content and figuring out what the audience is liking before they hit that jackpot. So is there like a timeline that people should give themselves, you know, before they go, this isn't working, uh, mm -hmm. to really generate that momentum up to that, the audience that we all hope to, to have one day? Well, you know, I got on on day one. Um, and I can tell you, like my first scopes, I probably didn't have a lot of people on them. Um, but you know, it takes time. I, I tell people, don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged if you're doing scopes and you don't get people, keep doing them. Eventually someone's going to notice and someone's going to listen. Someone is going to listen. So, I mean, I wouldn't say like give yourself a week, give yourself two weeks. It's going to really depend on how passionate you are also on, you know, on the platform. I mean, I love lab. I love Periscope. So I do both. Um, I know folks that just feel more comfortable in one of those platforms. Mm -hmm. So they, they know I'm going to dedicate my energy into this platform and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I think it's, I mean, it, it, it's, I think that there's always someone that's going to listen. And if you're going to start creating good content, it's going to happen. People are going to be there. Same like you're saying with YouTube stars, I'm sure that, you know, they have to go through a lot to create the type of following that they have. It's not, you know, it's not instantaneous unless you're, you know, unless you're a celebrity and you're just on Periscope and everyone's going to watch because you're a celebrity. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I always make sure to, especially in, in any personal branding, um, you know, summits or presentations, I always make sure to, to clarify that because I think we're this Insta generation, um, <laughs> you know, pun intended there. And um, it, things, things like building a loyal and engaged audience really don't happen overnight. And I think, you know, making sure to understand what type of content is generating that engagement and working with the audience is really crowdsourcing in the best of its ability from the people who are giving you that feedback so that you can give them more of what they want. And that's how Millennial Talk has grown over the past mm -hmm. three years as well. So something to consider in building personal brand, your own mm -hmm. personal brand. All right. So we're moving on to Q4. Here we go. Tweeting it out. <clears throat> 
We'll also s submit Q4 into the Blab feed okay. as well over here. And the question is, can Periscope be used to promote a corporate brand or a small business in addition to a personal brand? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to put my tweet, you know, my, my answers on Twitter, and then I will uh, go to Blab. Yes. <laughs> multitask, multitask. Mm -hmm. I have two computers open for right? function on one computer. I am so impressed. You like, can do this multitasking thing. We can handle this. Yes, um, I'm looking over here. I'm not ignoring. This is my, my second monitor over here. I think, you know, I, I love the way I'm seeing some brands using um, Periscope. Um, I think it's a great, you know, great tool uh, to reach new audiences, especially that might not be, you know, I find that not everyone that's on Periscope is necessarily super active on other platforms or like on Twitter. I've seen a lot of people who are on Periscope that, who have become active on Twitter because of Periscope. Mm. So, you know, so it's I think it's reaching new audiences. Um, I think the global aspect of it, of the fact that you can look for people, you know, within the map um, from a brand perspective, you can see, you know, if you're a specific small business and you're targeting folks in a certain specific area, you know, look at who's on your, you know, in your neighborhood and it'll, it's great for geo targeting in that sense and figuring out, okay, maybe I should pay attention to this person or, um, so I, I, I see brands using it. I've seen more and more brands putting money behind it. Um, and small businesses, I've got two case studies that I always talk about. Uh, my friends in Michigan called Frameable Faces. They're a photo, photo studio, you know, but they have a morning show. They do a morning show every morning, the Doug and Allie show. And they also do something called Steal Doug's Idea. And, um, and they talk about running a small business and how, you know, their ideas on marketing. And, and I mean, it's a, it's a brick and mortar. It's a mom and pop shop, I would say. Um, but they've been very successful at creating an audience within Periscope um, and leveraging it. And then Chocolate Johnny. I don't know if you've heard of Chocolate Johnny, but he's a, uh -huh. yeah, he's a chocolatier in Australia. Brilliant guy. Lovely guy. He, it's a chocolate business that has been going on, I think it's like since the 1930s. And he's just become one of those people who he actually says this, you know, Periscope and do it. Someone will listen. And he's been doing that and creating an audience. And he's got a lot of folks ordering chocolate, you know, from the U.S., <laughs> from Australia. And he even has at this point a U.S. distributor looking at his chocolate because of the success he's had on Periscope. So that just blows my mind from, you know, how to promote a small business. This is someone in Australia. I love that. You know, <laughs> that's what I plan on doing in my second life, being a chocolatier. <laughs> yeah. That's a cool family business. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's a happy day at work. Yes. When you get to deal with chocolate. And I also think, Kathy, you know, tell me if you, and obviously this is all about opinions and, and experience, but I also think in working with some of the more corporate-y brands who are trying to appeal to that millennial demo and, and attract that younger uh, demographic with non-traditional media, mm -hmm. I'm not talking commercials, I'm not talking billboards, I'm not mm -hmm. talking print ads, where are millennials? Where are the socially relevant people who are actually engaging in your content, they're mm -hmm. on social media. They're, they're engaging in platforms like these. And it's a way for a corporate brand to appeal to a different audience. Mm -hmm. It allows them to become uh, more of a, a hum humanifying um, or, uh, you know, making their brand more relatable. Um, mm -hmm. And it allows for all of the um, event marketing events to have that real time you know, experiential opportunity through a live stream that you wouldn't get to um, know or relate to if you weren't on the ground or, or actually physically there. So it really allows people to get to know a brand or business or people behind the brand or business in such a more authentic, relatable, candid, raw way. It humanizes the brand. I think it humanizes the brand to a huge extent. I mean, yeah. I love, I remember the MTV VMAs. They were doing a whole bunch of Periscope coverage. It was so fun to watch. I mean, yeah. I was like, Nick Jonas was like, you know, singing. I was like watching him do his thing. And I was like, and, you know, you couldn't watch that on TV. No one was streaming that because that was outside the red carpet. Like that was not inside the actual show. So, right. um, you know, they're finding ways to kind of show you behind the scenes, to engage you, to show you who are the humans behind this brand. Yes. And, and that's what we want. We want to have that, you know, relationship with the brand. If, you know, if I'm going to be a brand advocate and I'm going to be loyal to that brand, I want to have that relationship with the brand. So totally. it's, it's awesome. It's an awesome opportunity for, you know, 
for brands to big, big brands, small brands, corporate brands, B2B, B2C, whatever to show folks, um, you know, behind the curtain. So. Absolutely. And the corporate brands or the more, you know, structured brands that have to deal with a lot of red tape. Um, it's also a great way to um, align influencers to that you trust, of course, who have the credibility of an audience to host a blab or a periscope like a Kathy um, to, you know, activate on the ground on behalf of the brand to help cater to their audience. So it's a great, you know, also influencer activation and, and also marketing strategy that you can align several several different influencers for your corporate brand, personal brand, small business, big business, um, mm -hmm. at some sort of live event that has that experience element um, and the influencers that align uh, appropriately that obviously it makes sense for the brand. Um, but then you could just appeal to all the d these different micro audiences. And it's a fun way to, to really do PR for your brand for your mm -hmm. event. Completely. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'll give you an example. I was able to be part of a stream team that helped with an Applebee's campaign. Um, it was a social media campaign that included Periscope, but I was part of the stream team. Um, it was a whole bunch of influencers, um, you know, throughout the U.S. All you have to do is go into your local Applebee's and say, "Guys, I'm here. They're giving away two million free appetizers. All you have to do is walk in and ask for one." Um, and I was part of. I was lucky enough to be asked to be one of them. And it was intense. It was amazing. And the when the results came back, as far as impressions goes. Uh, it was 1 billion impressions. Wow. That's like wow. Super Bowl numbers. Wow. And, you know, and I'm not going to say that it was only Periscope. No, I mean, Periscope was part of the equation. But I think that it was that kind of use of social media. They used Snapchat. They used Twitter. They used Periscope. I mean, they used Meerkat. They used a whole bunch of different platforms. And when those impressions came back, it was like, wow. You know, so I totally agree with you. And it can be used if you do it right. If right. you pair with the right influencers, it can have a huge impact on a brand. So yes, and then the fun part is trying to convince the CEO to allow you to do it. <laughs> yes, that's the uh, that's the that's, that's the crazy difficult part. I was yeah. I recently gave a talk at the, I'm a PR person by by craft, let's say, um, and uh, I I was I gave a talk at the PRSA International Conference on live streaming. I was talking about live streaming, and the resistance that I felt from PR people, you know, the, the corporate PR people that, you know, like they have to respond to their CEO and all that stuff. It was interesting. And I was like, wow, yes. I mean, it, it's so interesting to watch it because they're so scared of managing, not being able to manage the message. Yes. Right. Exactly. So. Exactly. And that is something that is the risk. Um, but if you do have that professional influencer who knows how to combat, you know, something inappropriate, um, then then, you know, you, you're in the right hands. And it's I also find Kathy and, you know, you've been doing this a long time, but over the past year alone, the um, the <clears throat> the trust in the C CEOs, the publicists, the, the head decision makers in activating in the social space or doing something out of the box. I think people are starting to realize if they're if they're not taking risks, then they're really behind the curve. Is that something you would agree on? I agree. I think that, you know, if, if they're not and I wrote an article for Entrepreneur about this, if brands are not jumping in, their competitors are going to jump in. So you're going to lose, you know, you're going to lose traction right now is the time to build your audience and to build your followers on these platforms. Um, totally. You know, and I tell brands, you don't have to do this every day. It's right. not a personal brand. If you're a corporate brand, of course, people are going to watch you. H&M doesn't have to be live every day. <laughs> you know? right. um, yeah. So, so yeah, I definitely think, and I definitely think it's right. You have to align yourself with the right type of smart influencer that aligns with your brand and your messaging, because if not, it can be really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've actually seen, I've seen a few, um, it was like two years ago, it was a red carpet event full of A-list celebrities and they plucked two, you know, YouTube funny people to host the red carpet. And the questions that these people were asking these, you know, very credible celebrities were appalling and so embarrassing. And that was the definition of someone who has 100,000 followers may not belong on a red carpet or at a specific event. And it's not about all the time how many followers you have it's about the quality of content you can deliver and the type of engagement your audience you know has in in, in the content that you're delivering 
I, I totally agree with you. And there's two things I want to mention related relate to that. I hate it. I personally hate it when they hire like a YouTube influencer to market to me on Periscope because I don't have a frame of reference for that YouTube, YouTube person. I mean, I have, I like certain YouTubers. Yes. But it doesn't mean that I know everyone in the YouTube universe. So um, I have, I'm going to have a better frame of reference for Periscope influencers. So if you're going to market to me on Periscope, don't market to me with a YouTube influencer. Like you wouldn't use a Snapchat influencer on Instagram. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. Just because it's video, it doesn't mean it's the same thing. So Ooh, that's like one of my things. I'm like, okay, people, let's do that. Let's figure this out. And then, um, and then I'll give you an example. I have, what is it? Like almost 6,000 followers on Periscope. So it's a good number. It's not like the biggest number. Um, but I think, you know, the quality of my followers is pretty good. So I was actually hired by Teradata, which is big analytics, like data analytics company to do a campaign for them because of that. Not because I had a hundred thousand followers. It was really like, who are they trying to entice? Who, you know, who, who's a good influencer that we can align ourselves with? And that's kind of how it came about. So. Absolutely. And we seem to agree on our same fr frustration yeah. train. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, let's get ready for Q5. I'm actually really excited to hear what everybody thinks about Q5. Um, I just sent it out in Blab. It has been sent out in Twitter. I will give you a second to send out your answers, Kathy. Let me read it out loud. So question mm -hmm. five is, mobile live streaming like Periscope, like Meerkat, like Blab, the, is it the missing link between TV and social media? Um, I'll give my opinion while Kathy is sending out her answers. Um, personally, television is my first love. Um, and it was very sad to me as a millennial and as someone who's at the forefront of, you know, this generation that we aren't as watching as much television as we used to because I still love television and waking up and putting on all those cheesy morning shows. It really gets my day going. Do I personally think that live streaming is going to be the ultimate bridge between the two? I don't think so. I think it's going to in enhance the amount of eyeballs or conversation around this specific programming, especially younger programming like a VMAs or an MTV Movie Awards or an American Idol or The Voice. I think it's brilliant to include that live streaming element. But do I think it's going to be the end all be all solution to aggregating more eyeballs on television? I don't think so. Kathy's so interested to hear your thoughts on this one. Uh, definitely. I mean, to me, I see it in a different way. I see it as an, it's an amplification. So you've got social media, which tends to be static in some way. And, you know, you got TV. Um, okay. You know, a lot of people here probably watch Scandal. Woo, okay. meeting. Right? <laughs> Thursdays. Thursdays, you got to watch Scandal. So <laughs> you're probably watching Scandal on your screen and you're on your phone tweeting about Scandal or posting or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, you know. So it's the two Watch screen. With my red line. Yeah, with your red <laughs> line, of course, because you, yeah, we need it, you know. Um, yeah, my pull on. <laughs> so um, you've got the two screen kind of, inner, the two, two screen experience, what it's called. So I see this as another element, you know, um, Apple TV that we launched um, has an, a Periscope app, for example. And I see like, what if this comes to the point where we're integrating television with our social media at the same time in one screen mm. where, it's, where it's that experience where it's, yeah, we're no longer on two screens. We're just on one screen. Yes. We're watching the show, but we're in some way tweeting or, you know, that's kind of why I, how I see it evolving. Yeah. Is, yeah. You know, we all do it. We're all like watching Olivia Pope and we're going crazy, but we're also like tweeting or watching empire or whatever it is that we're doing, you know? Right. So, so I find it to be very, very interesting. And, um, and I do see an integration because you're changing the viewer experience. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you in the sense that I don't want to take away from television. I don't think that this is going to replace television. Mm -hmm. I think that there's still place for good content and, you know, great original, um, original or, or even reality shows or what have you, whatever it is that you like. Um, but I do see that it could potentially have that integration where we're experiencing those two things in one place. So. I totally agree. And it's going to be interesting to see because I would imagine that 
Apple is going to be at the forefront of that integration in, in the dual screens or multiple screens in watching your actual television uh, and making it less of a disconnected um, experience. Because think about it, if you're watching television and you're tweeting at the same time, especially like a, with a scandal, if you aren't listening for one minute, you're behind. Yeah. So how can we make that, you know, that much more of a seamless process? I am so interested to see how that evolves because it's totally bad. Down to. Mm -hmm. It's totally bound to. And I mean, I'm already seeing in the way like certain brands are, you know, creating their televisions and, yes. and, and this whole experience. Uh, I mean, and, and, it's, and also the big thing is virtual reality. So you're going to think about it from that perspective. Like, how is it all going to kind of come together? You know, virtual reality yeah. should be another, you know, you should, you should have a special millennial talk on that one. Because <laughs> that's the whole I'm not I'm not the VR specialist. Um, but uh, but I do see this kind of like becoming a, a bigger integration of says how do we consume entertainment? Totally, totally and totally could not agree more. And also um, for everyone listening, participating, if you do want to call in, absolutely. We are taking callers. Um, and <clears throat> so feel free to chime on in if you do have a question or um, want to ask something to, in particular to Kathy. Um, we are about to send out Q6 on Twitter right now. Here we go. Oh, and this is such a simple but huge question at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was some, It was a question that even, you know, we had Roberto Blake, who is one of my favorite people in the world, on one our, on our first Blab collab um, Twitter chat. And it was uh, all about YouTube and what makes what makes a video go viral versus another funny video that has 300 views. So Q6, Kathy, is what makes a good scope? Um, and I wrote here, you know, I think people go to Periscope or to live streaming for three reasons. Entertainment. I mean, yes, people want to be entertained. Education. I mean, because there's a lot of people teaching really cool stuff and engagement. I think that that's the big thing with live streaming is that you're there because you want to be heard or engaged. Like people get frustrated if you're doing a scope and you don't react to their comments mm -hmm. or, you know, or something or like, you know, if they make a comment here on the side and blab and we don't react to it or something, people might not like that <laughs> so um so i see that you know what makes a good scope i think engagement personally engagement within the periscope app is key mm. if you don't and that's what where brands fail that's where a lot of brands fail where they're uh, and engagement can be many ways it doesn't have to only be verbal because i'll give you an example harley davidson did a really cool um campaign where they launched their 2016 models and yeah, they weren't necessarily like some, they're driving their motorcycles. They can't be engaging your comments while they're driving a motorcycle. That wouldn't be safe. But it was about engagement in the, you know, in the experience mm. of driving this, you know, these motorcycles across different parts of the world. And it was just about the experience because it's such a passion brand. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it, engagement can be in many different ways. Mm. So. I agree. And I also think it's um, personally as, you know, someone who is so invested in, in the audience that I've accrued over the past few years, the engagement is also really a allowing your audience to feel part of the making of, mm -hmm. of the next piece of content or the next campaign or the next Twitter chat topic, um, because you only you really are as good as your audience behind you. Um, so get them involved. And I always say to brands who just don't mm -hmm. understand millennials, I said, well, we'll ask them the question. Questions. If you give them a platform, if you ask, they will answer. They will tell you what they like and don't like. Some of you know, you might not want to hear as much as much of what they don't like versus mm -hmm. what they do like. But at least you can really start to understand the audience, the consumer, um, you know, tar that you're trying to target at, from your brand or business. Um, and I think that I would imagine it makes a good scope as well. You know, making sure that people are liking what you're doing. I mean, if people aren't tuning in and it's three, four, five, six months, then maybe they're there needs to be a slight adjustment. There needs to be an adjustment in how you're saying or how your title or whatever it is. No, I right. agree. And, and, and I love, you know, I love the real time feedback that you get from folks. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Real time. And, and there's, there's actually, um, there's a Chrome extension called, Oh, hi, kitty cat. Um, there's a Chrome oh, extension yeah. <laughs> kitty, uh, called uh, chatterbox, which you can use. And it's really cool because it's almost real time, but there's a little bit of a lag, but you can go on and say Coke or Pepsi. And people can write in the comments and Chatterbox will measure it as a poll. Oh. So you can have this real time like 
marketing, you know, like uh, marketing research going on on your scope as oh, to your account. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is brilliant because it'll just show you the poll, you know, and it'll show you like how people voted. Like, you know, it can be Coke, Pepsi, whatever, you know, what do you want my next topic to be? Or, you know, so now, one of these. So do you have to be live streaming in order for Chatterbox to activate or is it something that you could, you know, put out there without a live streaming happening at the same time? Well, you have to have, for example, you've got to be on Periscope. So you've got to be on your mobile, whatever it okay. is. Periscope. And then you could be, you could, yeah, you could be on Chrome and on Periscope, you know, um, periscope.tv slash Chelsea Cross or whatever, slash Kathy Hackle, and then have that going on your desktop with the Chatterbox extension. And it'll just, you know, when people write in the comments in, it'll just show up. It'll, it'll just show up as a poll. I love that. You know, you're not going to see it on your phone because you'll just be scoping, but you'll see it on your desktop. So you, if you, I mean, it's, you you would need two screens to do that, um, but it's 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 awesome. I love the real time element of of being able to get that feedback. Oh, so, well, thank you for yeah. sharing. I'll, I'll I'll that. Oh, yeah, Chatterbox. So Chatterbox is just no, no. Chatterbox is not. I don't believe it's just for Periscope. I know that you can be used as a Chrome extension okay. that helps you with polls through Periscope because it'll register the comments. And it's a really really cool way to use it. Very cool. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to investigate later about Chatterbox. Um, okay, well, this is a great follow-up question to what makes a great scope. I just tweeted out Q7. Um, let me, a Q7 was just uh, posted in the Blab feed here as well. And it's how long should a scope be? I mean, it is live streaming, which means that you don't have a commercial, you know, coming in in the next five minutes. Um, but is there a sweet spot? You know, do, do, have you found the secret sauce to the time frame? I mean, I tell people 15 minutes, one five, like 15 minutes is a good, it's a good length. It's not too long. It's not too short. By my caveat there is if you are still at minute 16 and your audience is still there, they're still tapping for hearts. They're still engaging. Your numbers are still up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I mean, um, yeah, maybe don't go for a whole hour. If right. you know, if, if, I don't know. There's people that go crazy and they've done six week scopes where they've been on scope for six whole weeks. So, you know, good for them. Um, <laughs> a great experiment, you know, and kind of live streaming. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I would keep it short. But if, if you are at minute, minute, minute 16 and you're still, you know, you still have an engaged audience, I would keep going. Keep going. So, okay. Yeah. Great. All right. So let's get Q8 up and running. I'm actually very curious because I don't know this answer at all. Mm -hmm. um, and Q8 is how many people can scope at the same time? So I know Blab has four different mm -hmm. video browsers. Um, wh what's the deal with Periscope and, and how many people can be present at the same time? All right. Well, this is a great question. And I'm like super pumped to share this because some people know about this and people don't. You used to only be able to have one person live on one account. That's it. That's it. You know, so, um, you know, at Chelsea Cross, it could only be live at Chelsea Cross. Like no one could else, else else could be in there. But now I don't know how it's changed. The system has changed where multiple people can be live. So you could be live at Chelsea Cross. And let's say someone like Didi or who else like could be live at Chelsea Cross, too. So um, or you could have Didi inside your Chelsea Cross Periscope answering questions or, you know, or someone taking over. It's really, really awesome because you can actually have someone in there. So um, with your name, and it's really interesting, and you can have several people at the same time. So it's very strange, but if you think about it from a multi multiple camera perspective, um, and I go back to Rio, like for example, to the 2016 Olympics in Rio, like let's say that you are the, you know, you were the social media person for the Rio Olympics. You can have several periscopes going on from the at Rio 2016 handle at the same time covering different things. So do they have so, to log into the same account, like have that username yes. password? It has to be the same account, same okay. username and password. So you have to give someone access to, to be yes. present within your account. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. So it's like you could have your own co-host essentially. Yeah, but you won't be, at, you won't be on at the same time. It'll like, you'll, I mean, okay, this is the thing. <laughs> it's just really strange because this is really new. This is really new and I'm still wrapping my head around it. Um, but you know, let's say you're live on, uh, Chelsea cross, you know, using your handle at Chelsea cross and, um, and someone else, let's say you give your, your, another phone to someone else with your login credentials, okay. they can log in 
and they can type comments while you're live. So it's like you're in there, but you're you know so you're you're in there, but you're not in there because you're okay you're live. But they so can respond on your video, behalf. But yeah, but multiple users can be multiple active. users. Yeah, and then two perspectives. Yeah, Brandy Marie saying he like Parachute TV. Parachute TV did it. Their their channel within Periscope. Um, Scope Day did it. I mean, there's different brands that are starting to use it and see the power. Um, and and you can have several people live. Let's say you work for um, H and M, and you have um, you're doing the the fashion show, mm -hmm. and you've got Kendall Kendall Jenner here. I mean, Kendall Jenner here, and then some other model here. You could have those two models live from the H and M Periscope handle at the same time, and people could log in and people can see different things it oh. wouldn't be real time you would have to choose which one you're going to see okay but it's that multiple camera experience that is just i mean it's, it, this is really and this is really new this is really new within the platform okay so. so we'll have to explore it to really figure it mm -hmm. out ourselves but it's very cool to know that it's not just a one-stop shop anymore no not anymore very interesting. Unless okay. it's a, unless it's some type of weird glitch and they'll change it, but as of right now, you can still do this. So <laughs> people are going to be tweeting you, Kathy. I can't have anybody I else on tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I love this question because I I think it's always great getting inspiration from brands, people who are rocking it out already. What brands do you think are killing it on Periscope right now? Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I'll tell you a few. I think Royal Caribbean just did a big campaign uh, where it's about the experience and being a Periscope Explorer. Um, I've got some, you know, I love the campaign. I thought it was great. It was geared towards towards millennials. Um, I would have wanted to see a woman. There was most, there was, there were only men, um, which whatever, but you know, but at least they're trying. <laughs> at least they're trying. But it was really much about the experience and showing these, you know, the folks and what they were doing in all these islands. And it was kind of fun to watch. So that was great. And then they streamed some of those spares, the Periscope footage on uh, billboards in New York. Oh, cool. That's so fun. Super cool, right? Because it's like bringing that real life experience of like, I'm in there with them on the zip line. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? So I, really cool. Really cool. Royal Caribbean put some money behind it. They did a good job. Um, I noticed that their t their commercials have even um, mm -hmm. been brought up another notch. Like they definitely probably have like a new branding strategist behind them, but they're, they're doing a great, I feel like they're doing a great job. Like I I've noticed their commercials have been like, Oh, I'm interested in doing that. I, I like that vibe. Yeah. So that they're doing a great job. Um, and BMW USA is using it. They actually used it the other day to um, showcase one of their newer cars and say, and it was an exclusive thing where you had to reserve the car for a special phone number. They were giving you on Periscope. Oh. If you wanted this car, uh, yeah, really cool use of the platform. Um, the Ultimate Fighting Championship uses it all the time. They've um, they've taught their fighters to use it. I mean, they had a groundbreaking today at the new UFC campus. They were you know live streaming that. Then they had several other fighters on. There was uh, one of the Brazilian guys doing. So it's like they've been able to kind of integrate this very well into their social media marketing mix. And UFC has always been kind of like you know, at the forefront and very edgy in the way they use social. So I love, I love their perspective. Um, let's see what other brands, um, Applebee's, I did work for Applebee's, like I said, um, Sapo's is really putting some con, mm -hmm. you know, some content and some uh, resources into it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's just a lot being, a lot being done that is, um, that is pretty exciting. So that's great. I, and again, I mean, another great, examples of how you know brands in a non-traditional but traditional way in mm -hmm. advertising promotion marketing are utilizing live streaming to just further enhance all of their branding and um and commercials advertising events and um even like a royal caribbean mm -hmm. where um you you kind of think like you know more older people cruise mm -hmm. um what a great way to showcase young people doing awesome things through through live streaming. So, um, shout out to Royal Caribbean. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to them for for taking you know using a new platform, putting money behind it, and going yeah. after the millennials from the experience perspective. Very so, cool. Very yeah. Cool. yeah. All right, so question 10. We have five minutes left um, and just a few more questions to go. Um, so, Kathy, any tips for making scope better quality? Are there additional software tools or lenses on the iPhone that just, you know, could take that quality to the next level? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's different different brands. Um, I'm going to tweet that out. 
Um, I definitely suggest if you're serious about live streaming and periscoping, invest in some equipment. It's pretty inexpensive. Um, you know, there's there's different tripods. There's an audio clip or you know a fisheye lens that you can change out. Uh, a good microphone. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, and especially if you're a brand, if you're a brand, and it's a no brainer. If you if you're a good if you're a brand and you have some type of budget, definitely invest in some you know some some equipment. Um, you know, I use uh, Archon mounts, Rode mics. Um, different brands, but I suggest um, I tweeted it out. Uh, my friend Brian Fanzo, Vincenzo Landino, and Ryan Steinelson have lists of their favorite gear that they've tested out and that they are really, like, really, really excited about. So, um, if you are interested in finding out some more brands or stuff, you know, check them out. They've got great, great lists of brands that you know that have really, really cool stuff. So, so how do you know Brian Fanzo? Because I uh, love and adore that that person. <laughs> human. <laughs> well, I, I knew him before through Twitter. I mean, you know, he's like all, he's all over Twitter. But then through live streaming, we just kind of um, became friends. Um, and then, you know, through Periscope Community Summit, um, he was one of our speaker or keynote speakers. Um, and he's actually the MC for San Francisco. Uh, yeah, it's it's been really awesome to work with him. So yeah, he is just a ball of energy in the best. He way. is amazing. He's one yeah. of my favorite influencers ever. <laughs> Love him, love him. All right, so we have <clears throat> only two more questions to go, everyone. Q11 um, being sent out on Twitter right now. Um, what other live streaming apps should we be paying attention to in addition to Periscope? We, we have been name dropping a few others. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're, we're using Blab right now, although we're, we're chatting Periscope. Mm -hmm. um, any any that we haven't mentioned quite yet or any any... You know, and also we're talking live streaming, but I also think each of them kind of have their own personality. Mm -hmm. um, and do you see certain influencers using certain live streaming platforms for, for brands that make sense most, make most sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think right now the a lot of the buzz is behind Periscope. So brands are trying to test that out. Um, that's great. I mean, I have to tell you after meeting Mari Smith and hearing her talk about Facebook Live or Facebook mentions, uh, which is only available to verified profiles um, mm -hmm. right now. I am a convert. I mean, I I'm, I can't do it yet because I don't have a verified profile, but I see the amazing potential it's going to have. And I think it's going to be a big contender once it rolls out to more folks. Um, so I'm a huge proponent of Facebook Live. I think it's going to be great. Um, I love Blab from the collaborative aspect. Like we were saying, um, I see some influencers migrating more towards Blab than other uh, than other platforms. Um, you know, I, I was just re reading an article about Canva, Canvas, Canvas, not Canvas, sorry, Canvas, okay. um, which is in uh, an app. It's a live streaming app owned by AOL and um, how they did, I think it was yesterday, they actually did their first and this is it called Canvas. And it's live streaming. It's kind of like a combination of live streaming with it's really interesting. It's really towards uh, geared towards the, the younger millennials, I would say. Okay. Um, and they they sold through with guests guests you know the brand actually um, did a paid uh, campaign through Canvas, so you know I don't know if it's going to be a relevant one, but it was interesting to see it in the news and it's owned by AOL. So you know just to put that put that out there. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah. I it's my first time learning of Canvas, so I'm going to look into it as well. Um, yeah. And Cheval here is saying everyone should pay attention to Blab, and I agree. Blab has huge potential. Um, I love it. I think Google should buy it. <laughs> so. I, I absolutely love this interface so much because it's very, I mean, although I had slight technical difficulties today, but I don't think it was Blab. I think it's my computer. Um, but I just love that people can call in. You can also mm -hmm. see the caller. I love that there's a simultaneous conversation aspect. I just mm -hmm. think it's great. Kathy, are you okay to take a caller? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And by the way, I don't want to give a meerkat. I want to give meerkat love. And we give Meerkat some love. Someone's shouting out to Meerkat, and I agree. I just don't know Meerkat as often, but lots of love there. It's a great app, too. So, All right. Well, we did have a caller. Now we don't have a caller, but we do have one more question to go. Yeah. So, um, oh, okay. Great question. Would love for everyone to chime in with their opinion. Obviously, live streaming is on the newer side. Um, but the, the last question is, is mobile live streaming a fad, or is it here to stay? Damn, let me tweet out my answers to I'm that one. Send it out to our Blab feed as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And there was actually a Blab going on earlier today about this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is live streaming fat or uh, fat or, uh, you know, whatever. And I was like, 
I mean, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's going to evolve. Um, it's just another element that we're adding to the social media mix. I'm, you know, I'm very passionate about it. So of course I'm not going to say, I'm going to say it's not a fad. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually Applebee's was loving the love and they retweeted some of our Applebee content on Twitter, which is great. Um, and I have to agree with you, Kathy. I think that, um, I think live streaming is here to stay. And I think it's going to be one that really evolves. Like Facebook mm -hmm. was one of the first social platforms to really make such a, you know, stamp in the social space and look how it's evolved since, you know, you had to be, you had to have an EDU address to even have an account. <laughs> um, so I think it's going to be really exciting to see how live streaming is integrated into other platforms and other, you know, interfaces and how personal brands can use it, small business, big businesses, brands use it. And I think now is the time to start, you know, getting familiar with these platforms so that, if you are a personal brander or a freelancer, you are accruing an audience because I think now is the time to get in. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's the time to act, the time to get in, the time to build your audience and yep. build that, you know. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. And someone's here, Lynn, Lynn's here saying Applebee's is always engaging on Twitter chats. Yeah. And whenever I tweet at them, they always tweet back. I love them. I love I, them to pieces. I'm like, you know, I love brands that do that. That means they're really paying attention to their audience. And JetBlue mm -hmm. is another great one. If you, you know, get at them with any sort of complaint or you're unhappy, I mean, they are like first to try to, you know, make it right. Um, and I think brands that really are paying attention to the good and the bad things, you know, they're the ones that are generally that much more of a loyal and engaging audience and that's what we all want um, mm -hmm. as big or small of, of business as we are. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was so fun speaking with you and I can't wait to further collaborate. I love this and I have to admit that I really just kind of haven't given Periscope enough time. Um, so I'm motivated now. Do it. Do it. Thanks motivated. so much for having me, Chelsea. I mean, seriously, thank you so much. It's been such an honor. I mean, I love, I love what you do. It's you're such, it's so amazing. Oh, so, thank, um, you. thank you, right thank you, you thank you so <laughs> much. And our 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 blab is is recording. It will be up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, you'll be able to watch it if you missed anything in the beginning. Thank you for everyone who stuck with us through the technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. I so appreciate it. Kathy, have a wonderful evening. I'm about to go have dinner. And thank you so much for joining everyone. We'll see you next Tuesday. All right, bye. bye.